Welcome. And this is the final episode of this foreign function interface series. To me, the words foreign function interface appears to widen the barrier between the languages, which I don't like, in fact. In fact, the entire process of invoking the foreign function is a symbiosis process because it is intended to make languages to interoperate to leverage the strength of one another. Besides, technically the .dylib or .so or .dll are near language agnostic. It is in machine understandable format. It may have symbols and metadata to help to link with Rust uh, easily. But we cannot claim that the lib pattern counter .dylib is a Rust dynamic library anymore. It's a dynamic library created using Rust. That's it. That's that's how I want to see this. Anyway, here is an outline of the design that we are going to employ while invoking a foreign function between two languages. First, the caller loads the dynamic library. The caller ventures into invoking the foreign function housed in the dynamic library. The foreign function then performs all the great stuff. The function then commits the result into the heap memory uh, so that the caller obtains a pointer to the heap memory later. The caller carefully hands the pointer back to the library via another exclusive foreign function. When the caller is done with the uh, data copying or after he availed the data offered through the heap memory, it is the responsibility of the caller to uh, give back the pointer now to avoid any memory leaks. The library frees up the heap as addressed by the pointer. That's all. So these are all the sequence of activities we used to do normally whenever we are dealing with uh, a foreign function. Your guess is correct. Uh, it requires a couple of rituals on both sides while passing the types of the function arguments and uh, type of the results or type of the result it is a singular. The best way to see this in action is coding. So you cannot wait. So let me start from the client side. The Python has a FFI library called as C types that provides C compatible data types and allows invoking the foreign functions embedded in the shared libraries like uh, .so or .dylib. Of course, our beloved folks like Ruby, Node.js and many of them have a C compatible library. So I will start by importing the C types so that I can access the other ingredients of C types, especially the CDLL, which is required for us to load the library, and it has some C cache P that is a character pointer, the corresponding C equivalent of a string. So let us first load the library. So loading the library requires two things. One is where the library is, equivalent of the cargo lip search path and the name of the library. Let's concatenate the lib path and the lib file and pass it to the CDLL to load the library. So now we will create a test method. To do all our adventures on handling the strings. Handling string in Rust is always, I mean, handling a string in FFI is always a challenging and more interesting one that will help us to understand more about 
how rust string is different from that of the null terminated C string. Uh, so we will pretend as if we can invoke this method without making any uh, further modification as if it is a non-foreign function interface. We know that it is not going to yield us any result or that it is going to give, it may give us a result but it is not, it may not meet our expectation. Let's first provide a cargo build release to the first pattern counter library. Now we can find there is a square bracket. Okay. So now what the suggestion we are getting from the compiler is there is no such symbol called as get some string though we have one in front of us in Rust. So let us try to inspect this particular library for this the presence of this string get some string. Forget to provide the name of the library. Okay. So the name is a little bit mangled. So the compiler is creating a method and it provides a different. Uh, uh, mangled representation of this get some string for some reason so we applied a uh, no mangle to this and let us now see how this so now this is unmangled so no mangle is a derivative to derive to hint the compiler not to mangle this so that we can use that from the python library And uh, we have received some number and uh, this number is what it may be anything. It may be either the location of this. Now it introduce a CDY lib. CDY lib is a uh, C compatible library representation. And uh, you can make this particular method to be a C compatible one by introducing the extension C. Okay. So now we are getting a suggestion that if it is a C, DOI lib is our choice of library format then the string is not compatible with the C DLL I mean C DLL. So we try to return the pointer of this and the string pointer is a collection of U8 so we can return a star const U8 here as we saw in the rest of slice episodes. So it's again another number. We do not know what this number is. So I will go to the Python and try to provide some result type for this because we cannot normally a function requires two things. One is what is the type of the arguments and what is the type of the return type. I mean the result. So we configure here as dot get some string. The result type is let us call this as a C char T. So now what will be the result? So at least now we are getting some blank. I guess this has been 
the, the, the string is either dropped and it is out of scope that is the reason we are getting this B I believe. Let us play with the string slice to check what it is. There are two possibilities. One is the string might be dropped or it is not a null terminated string meaning wait a minute I will show what actually a null terminated string. Now we got some result. So without making any simple modification, we just provide a result type. Let us remove this result type now to check whether it is really correct. Yeah. So it requires first a result type. The result type is a pointer, character pointer. So the next is I promise you to show you what is a not terminated string. So, see the result what happens to this. Let us compile this. Yeah, so everything after the slash 0, including of slash 0, is discarded. So, the way C thinks that the end of a string is denoted by a slash 0. So, that is a small inconvenience for a C string because in order to find what is the length, you have to travel that multiple times until you are reaching slash 0. So, rest also has a uh, counterpart here called as a C string. Before we use that, we will try to provide this multi by character namaste to check. So what we are getting is a UTF-8 representation of this. We will try to decode. I try to decode that. So. Yes. Now we will continue our play. Let us provide the, the actual rest recommended uh, way of handling the C strings. So, in order to do that, we have to introduce a library in our dependencies. Be 0 0.2, I believe. So we, we have to first import this as an extent of the extent. Let's see. Columns are not required. And then from the lip we will get our the character pointer of C. Now let us return instead of star const u8, let us return this C cap. And in order to do that, what we need is we need a, the FFI has a C string and a CSTR. They are C compatible uh, C, uh, C string and it also has a C compatible CSTR. All of them will take care of um, the null terminated strings. It will ensure there is no null terminated string in between. If it is there, then it will return a, it will throw an error. So we will create a C string and let us unwrap that to get the C string. Otherwise, in case if there is an UTF-8, then there will be an error. So we unwrap that boldly now, um, assuming that there won't be any error. And then let us return this pointer. These are just experiments to know what they are doing. Yeah. So the reason is, 
the 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 str is dropped as the method run out of scope so that's what that's how rust behaves normally it will clear all the it will drop all those uh, variables of what we are creating inside and uh, let's now see what happens so now you are getting this thing so we are capturing the pointer but we are just um, forgetting that the str so this is all not a good practice i'm just showing how what are the various mechanisms available to us but the right way is to use the into raw so this will return the c the, the that is it will return the pointer but the most important thing is that the caller should return this pointer back to us so that we can remove that to avoid any memory leaks okay so whenever we have a method that returns into raw have that in your mind that you have to create one more method to free that and this requ requires the pointer that what you have sent outside to the caller so star const c is c c carries what is required for us now Just a, a difference in safety net and the parenthesis is not required. And if the given the, it's more of a pointer, it is not rather a string, it is only a pointer. And uh, we have to use the opposite of this that is from raw. We have just to consume this from the and when the method completes automatically this pointer will be removed and hence. The heap that this pointer is pointing to is also will be automatically removed. So we have to have this in a okay, should be a notable one. So the idea is whenever you are creating a C API, C API is anything that has a pub extensive, there should be a corresponding signature on your client side in case if you want to invoke that function. Now this has a special thing that is a org types, that's an array and you have to pass the various arguments in that order. And we will pass the result is something by our pointer. And let us first compile that uh, one which we forget. Okay. Let's make this into a void. This I learned from the FFA omnibus. Uh, whenever you are dealing with a character pointer, you, you first start with a C void P. Later, what we can do is that we can typecast it into C char so that it is easy for us to hand over the pointer back to that, uh, the freeing function rather than we are keeping this as a C char. And here we can cast that into the C char P and then later we can uh, decode that value and then we can get the value out of that this value that we can decode into UTF-8 and uh, now we have the value and the finally when we are done with this we can so this is the pattern that you can follow whenever you are dealing with a character I mean string or C 
character or C string or C str. Handle that as a pointer rather than directly the C character. So it is very easy for you to return that back to the uh, DLL or the dylib or the dot so. So what we did is we have literally created a layer of C API using the C DOI lib for this exercise and uh, if you want to quickly check how this get frequency will be let us again create one more layer of method C uh, API we call this and uh, let us this is a very straight trial one there won't be much uh, fun here because we are returning u32 and uh, the u32 is something that you can just return that without any fuss just we are going to invoke this get frequency method and uh, what all it requires is we have to convert this the inbound uh, c care into the corresponding c str using the from pointer method that is sufficient so this will give an idea of how to uh, handle a c string as well as a c str trigger Again, I thank FF Omnibus for all the learnings and uh, I learned all these things from the FF Omnibus. You can also just Google it out. not bother about handling the error in your situations now. We will simply unwrap that and uh, get that value. Let us return a minus one and make this as i32. Because at this point, I don't want to create any complexity by returning uh, a different result at this moment. So minus one is an indication of an error in any situation as we normally handle that in C. And uh, we are assuming that the S path and this pattern, all of them are free from any errors, and we are literally unwrapping that mindlessly and pass it to the get frequency and uh, again we can unwrap the result it is error let us return minus one otherwise return the unwrapped portion of it as I said. and uh, we have to keep the CSTR from pointer Yeah, it's safe. So it is almost the method signature is almost what we had originally. Get count. And let us unmangle this and then let us put this in the extent C. So now this is a C API for the get frequency method. So for every method that what we are having, we try to have one more C API so that you can easily test the other method in the absence of the C API. Most of the time the C API methods will have only transformations and we don't want to test this. It is equal to testing how CSTR and the C string is working. That's a waste of time. Let's configure this method now. The same way we did, we have to have some args type. We are expecting to, as long as it is inbound to the DLL, we can very well use that as a C cat P. Um, we don't want to provide a C void P because that don't know.
know how to handle C void P. I mean the CAP on the other hand does not know how to handle this. And this is directly a like 32. I think it is int 32 in thanks to Visual Studio it is I int 32. So that's what is a result type of this. So now we have configured the method arguments and the result type. Now just like its own method, it's no longer a foreign method. I don't like this word foreign method. It is a giving a sense of alien. We can just remove this method as if it is available with us. Let's give the glass dot txt. So we need to have it back and print. We have to count this into UTF-8 representation. And that will be past that. We get the value. So we need to cast it only in case if it is a C void P. And here we can directly pass this value and just directly print that value that whatever we are getting from that. Cool. So this that's it. So this will give you a fair idea of how to handle string and int 32. Okay. So we have to have proper defense mechanism on the other side to handle the TF8. So writing a C API for your method is it's, it's very simple, it's just a transformation logic of what we have. Now we'll try to create something that is more professional. That is the idea here is um, now we are the moment when we have a method, I mean the pattern already if it has been directed, let us keep that in a hash map and then we will return that. That's what is the next access I'm trying to do. So that they'll give an idea of how to handle structures. So similar to the data table, let us create a pattern table. Python guys are very, data table is a favorite for any Python programmers. So I create a pattern table. This is going to have the file path. And it's going to have a hash map of string and uh, then the occurrences. The idea is that it, it will act like a cache. When you have detected this pattern already, we don't want to go and uh, check, check that pattern again by doing an IO operation. So by reducing this IO operation, we can improve the performance. So it's just a hypothetical case. But the idea is how to handle situations that involve structures. Because many times we will have our ideas and structure and how to make a python client to access the struct of rest that what is the exercise so we have created an associative function quickly for uh, returning the pattern table and then we will go and create a frequency up this is the actual logic will be here First, check that whether the pattern is already cached in our hash map. What is there? We'll return that. This value is ambassant. I have to do some. 
nonsense to it because we have written a I had to out of this loop that just want that string. The result is okay. And of course, first cache that value in the hash map and then we take it. We are mutating, we have reported it as Anderson mute cell. Now, this is time to convert this value into Anderson zero, and then we will. Reference it. We can write this method in a more better way. But it is an opportunity for me to show you that these are reference operator like start, count, etc. You can write that in a single line also. And if it is an RNA situation, let us return the So now we have the structure with its two create methods to create the struct using this associative function new and the frequency method, um, frequency of method that will talk to the uh, patterns and get that will invoke the get frequency in case if the pattern is not already encountered in our pursuit. So now we are going to write for each of this. Uh, method in the struct the CAPI. So this is a naming convention normally we can use new pattern table that is equal to pattern table colon colon new and this is going to return the pattern table. Let us have this as C no mangle and yeah, let us return this as a let us put the pointer of this um, pattern. We had written the point of this pattern table. Let us do that shortly. Prior to that, let us try to convert the as we did earlier. Let us try to convert the inbound file path into the CSTR equivalent. Get that requires an Anderson STR so that. Let's get it as a CSTR, convert that into an Anderson STR. If it is error, I don't know what to do. Let me assume that it is good. So let us assume the file path is unwrappable for any problem. I do not distract your focus of how to handle in any situation. So now we have this path. Now it is time for us to create this pattern table. And we are going to box this pattern table so that we can return this to the outside world. Okay. 
So we have to turn a pattern table. That is not f of x safe. So we, have, we know that we have to return only a pointer to the heap. We cannot return the pattern table. So what we can do is we can box this pattern table. <coughs> and then we can return the pointer to this box. It is boxes for allocating a memory in the heap and then we are going to use the same e to raw <coughs> of this box. Box is a keyword. Now we have to return the either a star new pattern table or a star const pattern table. So we have written the pattern table in its mutable form. So first method is done. The second is we have to write immediately a method to free this pattern table using the pointer that what we have offered some time before. It is a start new pattern table. And this is going to be a white method. Again, I'm going to do this. If we fail to free up this, that may lead to so what we are going to do is that we are simply we are going to as the opposite of into raw is from raw and then we are going to just forget that so the rest will take care of just to clean up the heap So when the method goes out of scope, all those pointers that what we are referring here will be removed. Now it is time for us to write a C A P I for the frequency of method. So don't ever think that we can directly provide the struct to uh, hand the struct to the Python. Rather, whenever you are dealing with an object like struct you are again exposing only the methods of what the struct is offering. That's the idea. Otherwise, it will be a very difficult task for us on the other side to know too much amount of internal details about this particular struct. It is not required. It's more like law, the law of Demeter. We don't want to know much about our the internal software type. So this get pattern frequency is something requires a simple pattern. We will handle that in the same way as we did earlier. So now we are very conversant how to convert this um, this into the corresponding slice. Just to call this unwrap. So this will take care of all the null terminated strings. In case of a null terminated string, it won't take care, rather it will throw an error. So that you can understand if you have encountered a wrong uh, pattern or not. So now we have the pattern and now we can just remove the pattern table. Now we need the pattern table that is a trick. How to convert this PTR into pattern table? It requires two things. One is the mutable pointer of this pattern table. That is
is for the Amberson node cell. So this way you can get that back to, uh, to the operational pattern table just by doing this heads of ampersand new star. So the ampersand new star is a way to convert the pointer to the actual struct implementation. Change the method. Let's give a good name for this pattern table client dot table. Let me remove everything here to avoid any confusion. <coughs> so just to keep the lib and let us remove everything. So rewrite. On demand. So now we have the lib. Now we have to configure these three methods with whatever we have written in the pattern prompter. So the idea is let us create an empty struct. This is a representative of whatever the pointer is going to offer to us. So this pack, we are not going to define each and every member of this. Um, we are just going to have this and then as we are having the pointer, we are again going to ask the rest counterpart to do all its operation. As I told already, it's more like a, the law of the matter. We are not going to handle the struct here. If you want to handle it, then you get this as a JSON update and then you do whatever it is. Now we are going to access only the pointer and the pointer is the one we are going to use here. So the struct pattern table structure is here, will be offered or it will be encapsulated inside a pointer. Python has a great pointer in addition to the structure that we can use for this. So we are getting a C cappy, which we are passing as a parameter for the args, and what we are obtaining is a pointer to this structure. So Python has this pointer in addition to the structure. So whenever you are dealing with the structure, you always get the structure through the pointer. So we not to bother about what is the structure of the, I mean the structure of the struct. So in future when we are changing the struct for some reason, we don't want to modify any of our client. So it's a principle of least knowledge. So be careful to put a comma because it is a array. Even if you are passing a single parameter, put a comma. And this is going to have two parameters. One is a pointer to the struct pattern table and uh, the C cap. The rest type is the usual C in particular. So it is a full blown uh, example now. So now let us create a context manager class meaning um, one of the problem with the um, FFI is that we should be very careful about freeing the pointer. So 
we go for a width pattern table as and that that we can create a life cycle of how this class is going to be providing this init exit enter and the um, actual methods here so init is the equivalent of the constructor and that we can so that the signature of this will be more like our rest so where we we'll have a we won't have a self um, but the, the self is just mimicking the rest struct functions methods rather so now we are having this pattern table then we can access the methods of this pattern table one after the other So the init method is now executed. Let us invoke this pattern table by compact that is our aim. And let us pass the win. So now we need the method count of in the pattern table. So this is the this is a convenience in Python. We can create a context manager class that will take care of the when to create, when to clear, and what it should do during the time of uh, exiting out of this pattern table. So we can use this exit method to clear our uh, or to free up the point. So first we go with the count of method. So this is the pattern table. So we have the self dot table. So the self dot table is handed pointer to the struct. So that's what we are done. Okay. And we have this exit method where we will it has three parameters the self and then the type and then the trace. We are not going to use any of those parameters. We are just going to call the div and we are going to use the self dot table and the sufficient. So that's there is only one the, the table will be free now. And then finally We'll try to run this now to check all the efforts that whatever we have put so far. I'm missing the enter method. Forget to return that the count of method. So now we got the values. So this is how you can use the struct implemented implemented methods. You can so we can expose the struct implement method to the foreign thing using the context manager class. And let us check if it is really freeing up. It's 
say. So, and this width is done. Just put off the scope of pattern table. The pointer is automatically filled up. Just to check whether our cache is working. That's all. Expecting a zero. I try to play with the file name to get minus one. So we have covered all the edge cases we have tested the thoroughly. So it's time for us for a recap. We came a very long way. Just to take a pass this is what we have achieved in the six or seven long episodes. Fine, now it is time for us to create a node client to consume the API of pattern counter. So uh, this node.js is having a fantastic mechanism called as an add-on that helps us to uh, talk to the native uh, APIs using the shared objects idea. And we are going to use this uh, F FFI in API that is a node API. Uh, it's an API for building uh, the adapters between native application and uh, non V8. Non V8 in the sense the changes that what we are doing is independent is insulated from the changes to V8 and uh, in node parlance it is called as a node API. Uh, which we can use to uh, talk to the Rust library, though it has been originally created for talking to C and C++ library. So you can uh, learn a lot about this from the Node documentation. They have a fantastic documentation as usual. And you can require this add-on, the native add-on, the same way, or you can either import this in case if you mark this package.json with type equals module. So let me first require this um, add-on FFI in API and that has some uh, library mechanisms to um, talk to the rest counterparts. So your code is a better way to show you how we can do this rather than with a lot of uh, uh, English sentences. So I have just created a constant. Let me work from here in the in outside in way. Let me start with uh, show you how my uh, how the conversation between Node.js and the um, Rust is going to be. So in TDD, we call this as an outside in, though I am not writing a test now. I am just showing you. I am just creating an outside wrapper or layer. And where I am going to uh, hint to get a mental map of what are the functions I am going to invoke and in what sequence I am going to invoke the foreign functions.
So let me think of there is a count of method. And it has simply gives a console.log to send to there. Output. So this gives me what I'm it may give you an idea that what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, create a pattern table adapter by passing the file name. Then I'm going to invoke this count of method. That's it. So in case when everything is fine, finally we are going to free up the Anchors. Fine. That's almost like what we did in the Python. So let us start with a class pattern table. Up. We can either go for a function also. I just try to show you a different way of how we can do this with uh, a class as in a function. So where we are going to define the methods we are interested in and then the free. So the new method is the one that what we are missing now and we are going to invoke that within the constructor probably you have guessed with it. So first we load the library. The AP lib has a library that helps us to load the library by passing the lib name. That is anything that ends with a dot is for a DOI lib. Then we can create the three methods. We have to configure the three methods the same way we did that in the uh, Python. But every language and every library uh, asks you to do this in different ways. Uh, Node.js asks you to create a map as usual to denote the, uh, the methods and uh, what is the result type and what is it archetypes. So the idea is the same. So the first parameter of this uh, array is the uh, result type, not the aux type. So we had a pointer is what we are expecting this to return as we did in the um, Python client. So the first parameter the first parameter is what you are expecting from this method new pattern table of that we had to denote what is a type of it and the and the second parameter is again an array um, so where you can tell what is the argument you are going to pass to that so get pattern is going to return you int 32 and uh, the types that we are trying to Send to that is a pointer under the the string. So now we have configured the library. Let us camel case this uh, guys shortly. That is uh, my my style is that I will keep my JavaScript variable with camel case. Um, so now we have this uh, the pattern table, and this pattern table is now a member of this. It is nothing but the same thing that we achieved this using the init of the context manager of Python. Now we are achieving the same thing using the constructor of this. So that's the reason I selected a class so that you can correlate the structural commonality between both the initiators. Count of is pretty simple. Without forgetting I have written that now. And the free table, we have to pass this pointer to this and the pointer is already available in there. Okay. Sorry. The lib is seven that will give me the thing. Thanks. Okay. 
and let us pass now the atom table to free up this. So it's a pointer and then pointer two. Yes. That's all. So in principle, every initiatives of invoking a foreign function is going to have the same structure. So that's it. If required, you can make this required into import. But um, let us now try to cross compare this and uh, put this into our Linux box to check how the situation is. Let's create a new directory. We are using a CDYD. Let us call this as test CDYD. And uh, let us deposit our SO file here. Let us check our cargo shortly. So now it is ready. Let us SCP that into the respective directory in the Linux machine. So this dot so is a Linux shared object, and let us SCP that. Got it, and then let us copy the Python file. Sorry, the node.js file here. Strip off. So it's nearly eleven times. At 12 times the symbols were reduced. Later, we'll compare this with our, the other lid that what we deposited uh, times before. Okay, let us control C. Let us just this kind of case. I think I'm typing the wrong way. It is It's just CD way lip.
or in the slash root slash test situated. This is a place where we are keeping our library. Yes, I can install this buffer file hyphen and API. It's an add on. I assume that it's, it's cool and uh, let's see if it is client.js text so we have all our ingredients It's not dot the lib dot so it's just the lib pattern counter. So it's a column of copy paste. So another interesting thing is that we not even need to provide the dot so here. So I guess it will automatically depend. So the node.js is perfectly talking to our REST library thanks to the FFA hyphen in API. And uh, thanks to all those people who taught me, especially the FFA omnibus uh, folks who have a tremendous documentation of how to make different clients to talk to the rest library let's quickly check what what was the um, the div lib uh, lib counter that what we have created there but you know that we that miss with the um, the rest part of this that's the reason it is too slim but it's not a problem right? and uh, it's pretty cool now. Thanks. Thank you very much again.